Hey, Miss Raylene, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, Elisa. How about yourself? I'm doing excellent. And I guess our boy's there. Eric, I love you so much. He is here. He says, hello, Mama. I love you very much, too. Uh, so we, we are going to bring in a good buddy of my friend, Rich Martini, a filmmaker, uh, Bill Paxton. The, the uh, movie star, he was on Twister and some other things. Great guy, died way, <laughs> way too young. Eric, can you go get him? He's here already. And oh. Bill says that was one of many. Um, he says, the movie that I really enjoyed creating was Titanic. He says that was one of my favorites. And oh, you were awesome. in that? Yes. Wow, I had no idea. also hard. Oh, wow. Uh, what what was your favorite other than that? Twister. Yeah, I loved it. Cow! Another cow! <laughs> I remember that. That was awesome. Uh, all right, so do you mind if we ask you some questions? I've got Rich's questions, but I'm also going to ask you some uh, uh, questions that have some spiritual value that might be learning opportunities for the viewers. He's ready for this, and he says thank you for giving him the opportunity to get his voice across. Well, first of all, do you have any messages for your buddy, Rich? So he's sitting down, and he says, um, Rich was more than a buddy to me. He was a really close friend who I love dearly. He says, my departure has been extremely hard for him, and it has been extremely hard for my family. He says, I want everybody to know that I am happy and healthy. He's showing me that his heart is the reason why he passed over. Um, so I had heart complications with an operation and I didn't expect to die and nobody expected me to die. Oh. So this was very sudden for people, my family members to take on. Uh, he's telling Rich to be patient. He says, because there's gonna be big changes for him this coming year in regards to his his film making industry. Will he ever get involved in any of the stuff uh, related to channeling Eric? Yes, he said he is going to. His work right now is gonna be mainly focused on spirituality or um, almost like investigating the afterlife. That's okay. what he's gonna be doing. Okay. Um, he shows him starting with documentaries and documentaries being turned into something else. He's also showing me like, um, it looks like a poster board, something that you would advertise, either a movie or a um, poster board. You're showing me a poster board for him. Well, what are you trying to, to say, Bill? He does good when he puts things all together and very much like a poster board or a collage. And this is how he can figure out what his next step is. Oh, kind of like um, a vision board, maybe. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right, so here's uh, one of his questions. Who was there to greet you when you crossed over, Bill? You're a smart ass. He said, God. Oh, he, well, of course. He's, he's, being, um, he's being a smart ass is what he's doing. He says, I had family members that were there to greet me. My first family member was a grandmother and she was connected to his mother's side of the family. Mm -hmm. This is what helped him to transition. He says his transition was really shocking for him because he wasn't expecting to pass away. So as he crossed over, it was a shock. He didn't realize that I was dead. Oh, wow. Any, anybody else uh, meet you around the same time as your grandmother? Yeah, he's also showing me a gentleman and he has the gentleman here with them. Uh, he's connecting to father, so this is either his father or someone on his father's side. Okay, his probably his father. father. Yeah, it's his father. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, yeah. uh, what was yeah. the cause of your crossing over specifically? So, some a, compl a heart complication when you were having some surgery, or I, I don't know. I haven't read anything about you. Sorry. He says he had a stroke during surgery. Oh gosh. Oh. And that's why he passed away. It wasn't expected. He had heart complications uh, while he was alive and he was going in for an operation. I'm so sorry. He says, he, go ahead. That's what he was just talking about. He says that it was part of his contract to leave when oh, he did. Yeah. 
he's mentioning his daughter and his son um, that are still currently living right now. These two individuals are, they're, they're not struggling as much as they were. They're starting to kind of come out of this darkness. His daughter specifically is encountering, having experiences with him, but she's aware of it. So he wants her to know that it's real and she's not, she's not losing her mind. It is, it is her dad that's coming to visit him. Then. Oh, awesome. So what was the purpose of your spiritual contract? To, to die so young, you know? So he's really funny. He says, my first uh, mission with my contract was to come in and to shed light on the humanity on earth. He says, I wanted to bring laughter and humor to people because during my time frame of when I came in, a lot of people were born without humor or they had to put up their ass. Oh. My movies and my attitude came to enlighten the world. Now, the reason why I left at such an early age in life was to give my relatives the experience of loss. He says, although I knew I was going to transition at the age I did, when my death happened, it was still shocking for me because I wasn't expecting it, as most people don't. Um, he's showing me his hair. He's got a head full of hair. Mm -hmm. It's dark. He's probably about, I'd say, six foot tall. Um, but he's pointing out his hair being in, like, really good condition. It almost has, like, a wave to it, but it's slicked, slicked back. And he says, I still have my good hair. Oh, yeah, you're proud of your hair, huh? You were handsome. You were a handsome dude. He's very good looking. Mm-hmm. Oh, he says, I didn't realize that my looks were as good as they were when I was alive. I battled with self-confidence issues, mm -hmm. which is why I tended to make fun of myself a lot and made it a joke. Oh. He says, I, I didn't realize... I didn't realize I was as good looking as I was. So well, thank why you. Did you why, why did you have self-esteem issues, Beth? Um, so he's talking about some of the self-esteem issues coming in from previous lifetimes, something that had followed him. And he says, when I would look in the mirror, I just didn't see prettiness or handsomeness. It was something that I didn't see, but what I seen was beyond the pretty or the handsome. I seen humor and a good person, which is why I went into the industry that I went into. So we'll, we'll talk about another life toward the end and, and, and we'll see if we can make that connection. Who are you hanging out with over there? Eric. Oh, you two. You That's two together. I can only imagine. <laughs> That's an influence of a lifetime, right? <laughs> That's right. He says, I hang out with quite a bit of people. He says, but I'm learning quite a bit from your son. He's thanking you for sharing him with him because oh. without Eric, I wouldn't have learned how to manipulate energy the way that I learned very quickly. He says, Eric is a really good teacher. Yeah, he really is. And so are you learning that in part to uh, communicate with your daughter? Or yes. what else do you use energy manipulation for? He says, I'm learning how to manipulate electronics, computers, cell phones, lights, TVs. He says, when things start malfunctioning, know that I'm around. He's laughing. He says, Rich, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, 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 my gosh. Oh, that is so funny. So who else are you hanging out? Oh, go ahead. Eric is patting himself on the shoulder because he's teaching them all the bad stuff. Uh-oh. But it's not bad. <laughs> it's a bad influence on P uh, Bill Paxton. Oh, no. Um, all right. Who, who else are you hanging out with? So he's got his father. He's also got a grandmother. Um, he's got Paul Walker, who he's hanging out with. Mm -hmm. Who is that? Um, they're not human. They are more of like extraterrestrials oh. because he's communicating with other dimensional beings. That's when, cool. Before he transitioned, his work was transitioning into more of like afterlife stuff. He just didn't have the ability to do that. 
he says, so as I come over here to the afterlife, this is what I'm interested in, is learning more about dimensional beings and more about where I'm at. He is wanting to put more of an awareness to earth about the afterlife and other types of beings that are out there. Um, he's gonna help Rich to put this work out there. Awesome. So I asked if you're going, if, he, if Rich is gonna be involved with any of the channeling Eric, um, uh, like the exploitation on the book or, or anything like that. Uh, is it he will or should he even? He says both, he will and he should. He's a key opponent to channeling Eric. And he's also a key opponent to his next step in life with filming. He okay. says it's a necessary step for him to take. Any other actors you're hanging out with at all over there beside Paul Walker? He's not an actor. Um, Prince. Okay. <laughs> Who else? He's got two gentlemen that are coming forward. Um, I cannot get the name of him for the life of me. Names are so hard. God. They are, but I know who he is. Uh, he's an actor. Mm -hmm. What is your name? First initial, maybe? No, I'd probably do better off by the movie that he plays in. Oh, um, I can think of the name of that movie. That's how I know who he is because I know the movie. Oh, I just suck at names. Um, What's the movie name start with? Eric, you can help too. It's a combat movie. I'm trying to ask Eric to help me to get the name. Do you know when you have something on the tip of your tongue? Are you I know. I do it all the can't time. Get it out. The older I get, the worse that gets. That's where I'm at with him right now. He's, I can tell you that it's somebody that he's worked with and he's created movies with. Okay. Um, because he's showing a business um, partner being associated with him. Okay. Not just one movie, it was multiples. The movie that I'm looking at, it's gonna be, um, do you know the movies Alien? Yeah. It's like that. Okay. Um, in other interviews, uh, uh, somebody said that you also were hanging out with uh, the actor in the big in Big Love. I don't know that I've heard of that movie, but I know nothing about it. Uh, the actor's name is Harry Dean Stanton. That's the second gentleman that's here. Oh, okay, all right. I should have I should have just let you. I forgot about the second gentleman. What do you miss <laughs> about being on the planet, if anything? Physical touch and smelling things. He says, you don't realize how you can't really smell anything or how you have no desire to smell anything when you're dead. He says, so my desire to have smells that are on earth, such as flowers, mm. grass, really? He says, poop. Yeah, you know, but your socks, whatever. Right, you know, the dirty stuff. He says, you miss those smells when you cross over because you don't produce them anymore. Now, granted, you can create any smell that you want and any food, but it's not tangible like what you have on Earth. Yeah, yeah. Well, Eric can help you out and throw you some really nasty smells like he does here on Earth sometimes. Uh, Socks are the worst. Oh, okay, so where do you hang out while you're over there, usually? He says I'm in between worlds. He says a lot of time I dance in my energy to stay in the third dimension where humans are because oh. I have family that is still young mm. and is still needing me around. So I like to keep my presence around a lot like Eric does. He's taught me how to dance in my energy so people can feel me. He says, aside from that, I have crossed over fully, but I do not choose to be completely over as I am still trying to be a part of my family's life. Um, he's showing me that he really likes to ride cars and, uh, is that a motorcycle? It's a, it's some, it's some form of bike. It's really loud. Um, it doesn't look like your average motorcycle. So it's a, a different type of bike. Okay. And he says, uh, these are the types of things that I miss quite a bit. Um, his food, his tasting, he likes Italian food okay. and uh, he's missing noodles and things like that. 
All right, so when you do create a landscape in, in heaven, what's your favorite to create? Looking at a racing truck, okay. um, a bunch of cars going around, and he has created it like instantaneously. It's not something that he's worked on. He's flashed a snap of a finger, and I've got a racetrack in front of me. Oh my God, you're so lucky. Uh, do you it's prefer loud. like a, um, uh, like mountains, meadows, and forests, uh, beaches? Um, you know what? What kind of landscape? Do you prefer above all the ocean? I don't know. He is um, water. He's showing me ocean. Okay. And he enjoys mountains, but he enjoys the water more than he does mountains. Okay. Um, he explains to me that he would often find himself really going and finding his own thoughts when he was out in nature or when he was around water. This is when I would really figure out things and I would have ideas that would come to me about movies or I would have a knowing of I've got to go to this state because I'm going to have a job there. He says, so when I found time to go out in nature, this is when I gathered my thoughts the most. So you were able to tap into your intuition when you were in nature, I guess. Yeah, he was really connected to spirituality before he passed away. Mm. He says, so, you know, I knew that there was life before death, but what I didn't know was this. What does that mean? The structure of how life is. He says, you automatically assume that, you know, your, your physical body is not going to live on. He says, the physical body doesn't live on, but you still carry what that physical body had with it. He says, I was just more of a light being, and I was able to put myself into another place with the thought. And I didn't have to walk, but it was very much like walking, but thinking. He You're says, talking about so, now, over, over, the, over where you are, right? Yeah. Okay. He says, I wasn't expecting it to be this. He keeps snapping his finger. Yeah. I can be anywhere I want within the snap of a finger and without any stress coming to me. Mm. Do you have any regrets about your journey here on Earth? Because I wish I would have spent more time with my children. Being as I was an actor and I did quite a bit of traveling, it did take away time from me being with my family. He says, so I just wish I would have had more time with them. He says, but I don't regret my life and I don't really regret anything that I've done. I just wish I would have had more time with them. Yes, I bet. Any messages for anybody in the family or any friends? Anybody? It could be more than one, of course. This is your chance. Uh, he gets quite emotional when he's talking about his family. And uh, he gets emotional when he talks about Rich as well. He says, I just want them to know that I'm happy and I don't want anybody to stress about any legal matters. Tell them not to be upset and to know that I'm okay. He's visiting them in dreams. Mm -hmm. um, his daughter specifically is who's actually getting like clear knowing that he's there. He put a, he planted a seed with that one and she's, she's very open and very intuitive. He says his son is as well, but he's more logic minded. And so his son is having more of a harder time with having him be felt or being able to get through that dream because of that logic and the grief that's still holding him down. Um, he's telling his family to play movies of him that will raise their vibration and this will help me to come and visit you more frequently. My movies are my laughter and my humor. He says his personality was a lot like a lot of his characters with funny and really nonchalant. I don't think you seem very nonchalant. <laughs> you do. Well, do you have a specific message, for example, for your son and then your daughter and then your wife or anybody? Yeah, his son is more with grief uh, holding him down right now. He's telling him that he needs to speak to a therapist because he's tending to hold in his emotions and it's not good for him. He's telling him that he couldn't have done anything to prevent this. None of the family could have. 
had they had done different testing sooner, he says, my death still would have happened. His son is sitting with grief of, I could have prevented this and you really couldn't have. Mm. He says, so be okay with moving on, knowing that I'm happy and that I'm at peace. Um, his okay. daughter, yeah. his daughter, she's doing really um, better than all of the rest of the family. Well, what and message this, do you have for her? He's telling her that, I want you to use your voice in communicating and I want you to use your voice with work. Um, there's either a movie or a music, some type of role play that she's going to be doing. He's telling her to use her voice. So if there was a, like a part that she was trying to try out for, to use okay. it, connected oh. to music, your voice okay. or even possibly voiceover. Okay. That's the first thing that came to my mind, voiceover. What about anything for thank your you. wife? He said thank you for that one. Um, and for his wife, he's getting emotional. Oh. Okay. He's sitting down. Eric is holding him on his shoulder like a, oh. a bro. You're so sweet, Eric. He says, she was the love of my life and she is the love of my life. I will continue to wait for her and I will continue to live with her. No words that I can give her that can make her feel any better. She's lost her other half and I feel the grief that she has lost. He says, it's okay for you to move on and it's okay for you to be happy. Um, he's telling her to take care of her heart and her diet because there's some issues that are going on for her physically. Mm. Um, oh gosh. Okay. He's going to be there to kind of guide her to what she needs to do, but um, there's heart problems. She's having heart okay. issues. Okay. Oh, gosh. Um, so tell us what you think about uh, Rich Martini. Uh, you know, anything you want to tell him? Any impressions about his work, about how y'all became pals, anything? He's showing me that they became friends through the filming business. They, mm -hmm. neither of them were really well known when they started interacting with, with each other. Okay. The bond that grew very quickly. Um, the movies, it's like, I, this might even be Alien. It looks like the movie Aliens that he's showing me. Okay. And um, it's in connection to that kind of what sparked a relationship with them. Okay. That's when my relationship really grew. He says it's the interest in the paranormal and the interest in the movies that are just unexplainable why Rich and I connected. He says we're both like-minded. Rich is more of a soulmate and not much of a friend. He's a soulmate. He says he's a best friend and someone who I've lived multiple lives with. Um, Rich is kind of at a pause right now, and he says that he's really not sure which direction he wants to go. Rich, you constantly think about where it is that you're going or what you want to do. Bill is telling you to go with where your thoughts are putting you, and when you find that you're going to go with something, don't go back to your old habits. He says stick to one road and go with it, even if it gets hard or if you feel like it's not going anywhere. He says stick with it, and you will see change that will happen. Um, he's talking about finances changing for Rich, and it's happening this year. There's some type of document, um, documentary that Rich is either working on right now, or there's something in the progress that he needs to finish. Okay. Okay. This is going to help him turn the documentary into either series, something that's going to be going on long term. Either it's not going to be. Uh, 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 either a movie or a series. Okay, got it. Okay. Any other advice for Rich? He says you need to work on yourself, and he says that you also need to take care of your health. Um, he's not throwing him under the bus, he says. So just know that I'm trying to help you out as a friend. He's showing me his stomach, and I'm looking at... This is going to be either your spleen or your um, your liver. The, okay, the liver is on the right and the spleen is on the left. So right below, is this the right side? No, this is the left side. 
So it's on the left side that I'm looking at. So that's okay. Uh oh, you froze. Uh oh, frozen. Oh, there we go. There we go. Thank you. Okay, I was holding, pull the energy back, and it worked. <laughs> All right, awesome. It's his liver that I'm looking at. Oh, okay. All right. So he says to take care of your health. He'll know what he's talking about. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, how um, should how should you? Oh, go ahead. You're breaking up again. Oh. How should he work with Channeling Eric specifically? So he says he can create a script and give you something to base Channeling Eric off of ideas. Also, he's going back to this poster board. It looks like almost like a collage, but it's not a collage. Like, uh, I wish I knew what this was. Um, it's like it looks like a poster board and this is going to be how he advertises but it's also going to be the structure of how he goes about with channeling Eric so maybe Rich knows what the poster board okay. is about and he had an idea yeah. I, I, I bet he knows he poster board and he says he can design the structure of it and also direct how things are going to fall into place Okay. So he's very, very smart with things like this, and he can give you ideas and a plan to put into place. Oh, he's a smart he's already, dude. Smart yeah. dude. Bill um, says that you, Elisa, are really smart yourself and intelligent. You're incredible. You don't let people tell you you can't do something. You put your mind to it and you do it. He says, that's what I love about you, Elisa. Well, you love something about me. Oh, that's so sweet. I yes. love you too. Thank you. He says, I'm really happy that you have found your way into Rich's heart and into Rich's life. He says, it's not by coincidence. This is also something that is contracted. Rich is supposed to know you because of this work that you are doing with Eric. And the work that he's people. doing with the afterlife. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's All over right. there putting Eric on the shoulder. Oh. All right, so um, let's see, let's do the spiritual questions. Uh, first is, what was your spiritual mission as Bill Paxson? I'm, I'm gonna think it probably has to do with bringing humor, elevating the vibration of the world with your humor, but I don't know, maybe that's only one thing. So my spiritual mission, part of it was to learn how to be a father and to learn how to have patience. I really wasn't a patient person until later on in life. My children taught me how to be patient. Probably not easy for them, but I learned the lesson. You see, the reason why I left so early in life is because I learned what I was wanting to learn in this lifetime. Mm. He's also showing me that he had wanted to learn how to love himself for who he is as the outside. What do you see on the outside? When you look in the mirror, are you okay with this? He says, from a young age, I wasn't okay with my self-esteem. And so as I grew older and I seen that people love me for personality and not necessarily looks, I learned that what I reflected came back to me regardless of how I looked. So I learned self-love throughout this life. Oh, how Although it's not something that was easy and wasn't something that I learned until late in life, he says, I still learned it. Oh. I'm proud of you. Uh, he's talking about his, his movie, the, the whole filming industry. And he says, people don't realize how much time and effort it takes into producing a film, how many people, hours of work. Oh, gosh. And in some cases, years. He oh, says, there's a lot of time. You have to consider lighting. You have to do makeup. You have to do scene yeah. after scene. Lots of cuts, he says. So patience was something that I had to learn with my career and not only my children. All of the time that you put into it, a lot of people just assume that because you're a movie star, it's easy for you. Yeah. But in fact, I put in more hours than your average person that does a 40 hour a week. I put in double that. Oh, wow. The work that I would do. What because were you? Oh. So patience was definitely something that I learned throughout my life and that I 
that I accomplished. That's awesome. Uh, were you here to teach anything? Maybe that's where the whole humor comes in. That's what I said. Goodbye. I was here to teach humor and um, to lighten up, people. Yeah, he says I was also here to teach respect. He says during my time as a, a movie star, I would come across a lot of inconsiderate people, people that had money or fame and thought they can treat others like shit. He says I wouldn't accept that and I would put my foot down whenever somebody was nasty to another individual. He says, so I always let people know that I needed to be respected and that they would also be given respect for me in return. Um, you're all right. That he is says, nice. Yeah, he's all, I'm going off on a whole other thing now. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, what, what's he, what is he wearing right now? He is wearing a suit. It's a black suit and a white um, t-shirt. It's the button up type. He doesn't have on a tie though. He's just, um, he looks like he's going to like a fancy dinner or something like that. He's got on black shoes that are really dressy. Yeah, Eric, no, you're, you're okay. Eric is cutting him <laughs> off. Now, what about me? Eric oh. has these light blue jeans. He has on white sh shoes that have like a black stripe on the side of him. Eric is wearing a red t-shirt and um, there's like writing on one side of the t-shirt. I can't make out the writing. And uh, his hair is froed out. He doesn't have on a hat, but he did in the beginning when he came in. He took his hat off. What what's what does your uh, what does your t-shirt uh, say, Eric? Nike. Okay, that's so funny. Um, I didn't know name brands were still important to you. Yeah. I don't think they ever were. Well, maybe Vans shoes. Uh, so you, so basically, the question was already answered. What were you? Did you? Uh, what were you here to accomplish? And did you accomplish that? And it sounds like you did. He says I did, and I also accomplished much more than what was put into my contract, as you would say. He says the one thing I would like to tell people is that you have free will, and you can do anything that you choose to. You can change a contract, you can alter a contract. He says, you have free will and you can do anything that you choose to. You put your mind to something, you shoot for it and you reach for the stars. He says, I had so many doubts in my life and where I didn't think I was good enough for a position that I got, but I reached and I shot for the stars. He says, so anybody else can do that. He says, I wasn't supposed to be as famous as I got. Mm. It was just coming in for like small business. Yeah. Made it much bigger. That's awesome. Uh, what insights did you get right when you transitioned? I know you said there was a shock, but was there any other insights? Oh my God, this really is real or anything. He says it was more of, oh shit, I'm dead. And oh, wow. He says it was a shock as I was explaining, but it wasn't a shock because I was afraid of being here, it was a shock because I was no longer a part of the human life and my body was gone. I wasn't afraid because I just had a feeling like I'm okay, I'm safe. He says, I know, you know, when you're with your mom and you feel safe, well, that's what I felt. I felt mm -hmm. safe, but at the same time, still shocked. Yeah. Well, did you go to a light? I mean, what was your actual transition like? The light wasn't right away. He says, I seen the hospital room around me. Oh. Um, I seen things that were going on. He says, from that, it was as if I was pulled and I was pulled into another room. And in this room, that's big. Um, he's making me feel like everything around him is amplified, um, almost like an echo. And okay. he says, in this room, I had things that were amplified around me and I seen light, but it's not like the bright light that you have as a sun. It didn't hurt my eyes and it was very warm and welcoming. Along with this, I had my grandmother and my father that came down to visit me. Um, he, 
explaining that we weren't communicating by mouth. We were just communicating with each other through our minds. It wasn't how I communicated as a human. It was just a knowing of information that was coming to me as I was looking at my family members. Cool. Explaining after he goes through this part, he then goes into a room that has a table. Um, kind of reminds me of like a judge scene or okay. um, like higher people. I don't even know if they classify them as being higher people. But he goes into this room that's got authority or some knowledge over him. And with this room, they sit him down and they let him know that he's going to be going through a life review. He goes through this life review, which seems like it takes forever. And then he comes out. He says, as I come out of my review, I'm greeted with much more people. People from work, family, past lives. And he says, we very much had a celebration of me being back here. Um, it took him before this happened in human terms. He was waiting with his family. He wasn't ready to fully accept the party and the transition. Yeah. He says, so I did not transition immediately. He was with his family. Okay. All right. Do you want to share another life that most influenced your one as Bill Paxton? Yeah. He's showing me he's writing. Um, he's not writing with uh, the pens that we have now. I wish I knew the name of this person. Like a quill? A quill? Oh. Yeah, that. It's like a quill. It has like the feather on top of it too. Okay. Um, this person, he's a famous person. Uh, he did writing. This is not helping me, Eric. <laughs> Shakespeare? Yes. Okay. And he says, this is the life that most influenced me because as I was in this life with Shakespeare, I was writing and creating things that came to play, like people would act it out. He says, and so with that, it turned over into this life of my love for acting and my love of humor. Yeah, because Shakespeare had a big sense of humor too. At least it is writing. So you were Shakespeare? He says in the flesh. <laughs> wow. Okay. So uh, can you share another life where you weren't super famous that has something to do maybe with your self-esteem problems that you said came from a past life or past lives? So he's showing me um, this is going to be in America that I'm looking at. And he's a young boy. I would say that he's probably about seven anywhere from seven to ten years of age mm -hmm. and he's showing me that he had a lot of mental and emotional abuse that went on in this lifetime mm. and this is where it stems from not only from both mom from mom and dad he says but it was people in his community that would also be mean to him um why did you look funny did you have a disability yes cross-eyed i mean why why was it he says, I had a disability and it was a speech impairment because I couldn't speak correctly and I couldn't speak quickly the way that the other kids would do. Um, what do you call that when you, it's like a stutter. There's a word for it. Um, Tourette's. Oh, okay. So thank you, Eric. You did. That's right, Eric. Yeah, Eric, Eric had that too. You did. I forgot about that. That's, he said it was what we would consider Tourette's okay. and I would either get nervous or I would be afraid of something and be stuck and not be able to communicate right then and there. So I was often made fun of for that. Aww. He says, during this lifetime, I learned to laugh at myself as others were laughing at me. So that way I can move forward. Um, so this pain is what carried on through other lifetimes. And this is why I had to learn to be okay with the individual that I was inside and out. He says, I learned it. Okay. Uh, do you have any message, messages or advice for the world overall? <laughs> Eric, you're not funny either. Um, they're saying to 
watch out for things that are going to be coming out with our government in regards to extraterrestrial and also in regards to the afterlife. He says, your government is going to come out with a lot more information that they're withholding from you. Um, I believe this is what Rich is going to be investigating. Is that what not so much are you, paranormal. Are you saying this, Raylene, or is, is Bill saying this? Bill is, but oh, okay, okay, got um, it. That's the whole. I was bringing Rich into it. That was me as he was showing me that. Okay. And it's going to be more of like investigation with extraterrestrial and also paranormal. Like when you're communicating with them, it's not so much. Um, a lot of people will think it's channeling, but it's not. It's kind of like information coming to you from other dimensional beings. It's a form of channeling, but not connecting to a dead person. Oh, okay. Uh, Bill, can you share anything about you that almost, that nobody or almost nobody knows about? Like for example, uh, Madame Curie, her deal was she uh, had a little teddy bear sewn inside of her skirt. So he is showing me an army flag. Um, do you know, it's not a big flag. It's like a little piece of fabric. And um, I know it comes from the army. It's from being in service or either someone that was in service. Okay. Like that. This is with me. Okay, cool. Uh, what do you do in the afterlife right now? And then I just have one more question. He says, as of right now, I am still learning how to communicate more and densen my energy so that way my family can connect with me. He says, on top of that, I am learning how to communicate with other beings. Yeah, okay. Uh, anything else you want to tell us that will enable humans to evolve to their greatest potential, either as a whole or individually? Be yourself, be authentic. He says, do not try and be somebody that you're not. He says, because when you do this, you are not really doing what you came here to do. He says, so my advice to you is to be authentic to yourself. Awesome. Um, it, he has a message for his daughter. Oh, He's okay. That there's some type of schooling that's coming up for her and that she's gonna be going through an education change. He's telling her to go through with it. It doesn't look like it's gonna be um, a long-term college. This is gonna be a different type of education, something short-term. Like a little certification or something, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Eric, do you wanna ask anything of Bill? He says, nope, mom, I've got him 24 seven. Well, that's true. What about you, Raylene? Anything you wanna ask? Well, you kind of got a 24 seven too. You can channel them anytime. I do actually. Um, so now that you, you know, you've been dead for a little bit of time, is it still hard for you or is it still like shocking for you to realize that the afterlife is that way? No. Okay. Uh-huh. So no. uh -huh. He right. says it's something that you learn to adjust to. It's a lot like energy based. He says, you know, when, you think of electricity, how if you put your finger in a socket, it's going to shock you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he says, well, what I've learned is not to put my finger in that socket so quickly. He says, because my thoughts are very quickly. And so I travel at the speed of, of my thoughts. Wow. That's a, a cool. I wish I could do that. Don't need all, to use up all my frequent flyer miles when I go to Norway to visit relatives. <laughs> uh, anyway, you guys, thank you so much, Bill. It was a delight to have you. And thank you, Raylene, for being such an awesome channel. You guys can find her at angelmedium7.com. So angelmedium, the numeral seven.com. Anything else you want to share? Uh, Bill or Raylene or Eric? Hey, I love you, you Eric. <laughs> Eric says, I love you, Mama. He's blowing you kisses and he has hearts coming out of his mouth. Oh. Bill is thanking you for this time and opportunity to get his voice out there. 
He says, thank you for this as well. And he says, thank you to all of the viewers and all of his fans. He says, I really, really am grateful for you all. Thank you. Love you all. Love you, Lisa. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Have a wonderful day. Thanks Bye. for doing this on such short notice and be careful out there. I will. Thank you so much. Okay, bye. Bye.